Today I want to show you something about a SharePoint document generator realized as a full complete Microsoft 365 app based on SharePoint framework. But first, a small introduction about me. My name is Markus Möller. I'm a Microsoft 365 developer expert. I work for Avanade in Germany and I'm a Microsoft MVP for Microsoft 365 development, so it's right. And this um, is a directly hand over to my topic because today I want to show you something about real Microsoft 365 development. And as usual, let's directly jump in to my demo. So what I want to do is I want to generate a template based offer document with some custom metadata in various Microsoft 365 products starting with a Teams app. Pick off my Teams app, get a nice little form, enter some data, pick a date, let's pick a price. Also manipulate it here if we want. Select the VAT set and Let's enter some text. Forget about the typos, doesn't really matter today. Kick it off, and once we find a link to the document right here, you can directly also show the result. Should be in my offerings library. And there we are. We can also see already some metadata in the in the view. We can also see something here we just entered, we can open that file. Unfortunately, the problem is this regularly opens in Office Web App and Office Web App is not able to support directly showing up some custom metadata. Therefore, we need Microsoft Word as desktop application. And there we are, yeah, a simple, document template open with our metadata and that's it now we can continue of course we can correct something here we can continue to work i also have an outlook about something to review but this is another story it's not today that's uh, the document created here from a teams application realized with sharepoint framework in that way we can nevertheless also switch over to our next application. For instance, we can go to Outlook. There, if you didn't realize, we also have an app button and we have right the same application available here just because we installed it as a personal app in Microsoft Teams. We can open it here as well and do exactly the same thing. Don't wanna bother you too long. Therefore, I make it quite short. Create that offer, directly refresh. There we have our second demo. The third option we have is, I'm doing it from here, is Microsoft 365 or former Office 365 platform, where we also have apps available. And to our awesome price, here, the same app offer creation realized with SPVX is available as well. If you want me, I think we have some time, we can do it once again. Maybe different. Take it off. Works like a charm as well. Where was my, there we already there. Now you might wonder how uh, do I know that I have to write all the documents to exactly this document library in my offerings SharePoint site. 
this is about, I will switch back to Teams here, this is about a configuration. Configuration, of course, you can do in, in your app host, uh, in your app settings, whatever you do, but you can also do it personally. So for each individual personal application, and this is realized with the second simple SharePoint framework web part, which you find here under the settings. And here is my set URL to, um, to the site, which I just showed you with the content. How is this realized? This is realized with a so-called personal app configuration via OneDrive. And therefore, I created the graph endpoint. I created a storage location in the apps folder. Here we have the application name. And in case of SharePoint framework, it's always the SharePoint Online Client Extensibility Web Application Principle because this is the app ID or the enterprise application behind the MS Graph client in SharePoint Framework. Beyond that, we have the possibility, and I took that um, to create a custom uh, folder or even a custom folder structure if we want. I choose Create Offer here, and here is my settings JSON, which I stored here from the settings file, and here you have the final configuration file. That was everything from today from my demo front. Now let's illustrate how this works. The first thing is, which kind of possible scenarios do we have for those kind of Microsoft 365 across apps? Yeah? You have seen a personal Teams application realized with SharePoint Framework. And this is also available a bit different, but uh, as I have a web part already in place, I could also, I did not show this, but I could also render this, of course, in SharePoint uh, as a web part on a page or as a single page application would work the same way. So in fact, it's available on four different products on Teams, Outlook and Office, respectively Microsoft 365 as shown and in SharePoint as well. You can achieve the same with the Teams native application I already showed a, a, a sample, uh, I think the Thursday before Christmas, and I will have another one, but come to that later. Um, and additionally, in that combination, you can also use search-based messaging extensions out of those Teams apps. This is not possible in SharePoint Framework right now, um, and this is why I couldn't show it today. What do we need? To realize this, the first thing is we always come from a Teams application and therefore we need a Teams manifest and uh, in detail a manifest version 1.13 or above. And what's also already highlighted here, uh, although it's only an icon, is what's necessary is the web part ID, which you can find in the web part manifest file. We have two static tabs here as shown. We have the offer creation itself. This was the form where I entered my data and we have the settings. Um, this is the second static tab here. And this is realized by a hidden web part because the setting makes, settings web part makes not sense on its own. It makes only sense in combination with this uh, Teams application. As said, for the URL, which is quite, quite long here in the content URL, though I put it here a bit uh, a bit broader, um, needs to contain those web part ID. And the web part ID, as you can see at the bottom, is originally included in the web part manifest file. The second thing, and this is a bit outdated slide here, um, as we've just seen that uh, SharePoint Framework 1.17 is available. This sample currently is realized based on 1.16, which did not support manifest files automatically of version 1.13 or above even. So I had to package and deploy that stuff manually. And this Teams application always consists the two icons and the manifest file where I was showing you an extraction on the previous slide. So what I'm doing is I zip uh, those three things 
and upload it. It's always good to know how this works manually, but I think I did not check it because it's only uh, available since two days, um, but I think uh, this should now already be possible with the synchronize to Teams button you might know, um, which is available from the SharePoint app catalog. So we've seen manifest file for Teams is important, but what's also important most of the time in those Microsoft 365 across apps, this is Teams JS SDK version two, because with version two, we are able to use the context and some specific things. In a former sample here, I did not do that. Um, I did not show you that apps can also look different based on the host. Yeah, so it can look a bit different in Outlook than in Teams than in Microsoft 365. I did not realize this here, but this would be possible. And I showed this in a previous sample. When you want to Google for that, it was uh, I think from uh, from the Thursday before Christmas. What I'm doing here is first. In SharePoint framework context, I'm checking if I have a Microsoft Teams SDK available, and then I know I'm running in Teams, Office, or Outlook. Otherwise, and you see this at the bottom, is I would run in SharePoint directly. So I could act different here and, and point out also SharePoint. And the second thing what I'm using here, come on, is here I use this so called team site domain. And the team site domain is only the domain name of my SharePoint tenant. And this I need to know to get, for instance, to get to the app catalog. And when uh, I need the app catalog to further continue with uh, the graph endpoint, I was showing you about the custom configuration. Another quick um, point out is um, the URL. I'm using behind the scenes, by the way, I'm using SharePoint REST API. And here I point out how to get the template that I was using. So I was simply using a standard Word template, um, uploading it uh, via, um, yeah, why you can upload it via UI. You can also achieve this uh, with PMP provisioning. Um, I was showing also this in the blog post. The blog post you will later reach out from my resources. And this is the API I'm using here because this is the template is stored in the hidden folder called slash underscore CTS and then uh, based on my site and my list. Last not least, how does the shown personal app folder configuration work? The endpoint you can see on top. And the endpoint consists of several things. First, we have the link to the personal users OneDrive. Then we have a special app folder. Yeah, and in my, in my case, it's a special app root. This is the endpoint. And this results in the subfolder apps and this folder name of the application ID, which is in our case, this long SharePoint online client extensibility, blah, blah. The next part, the third one, is my custom folder. I choose to identify because this is my application the real name of the application, which is my, because of course I could have many, many SharePoint applications with the same application principle. And last not least, the file name. This is the settings JSON and below you also can see directly the content that I was using. This for explanation of the current solution here. Finally, some resources. I wrote two blog posts about this specifically. The third one is also about the mentioned PNP provisioning of this uh, template folder. It's linked in both of them as a series. The sample code is also available in the PNP repository. And last not least, the Microsoft documentation on SharePoint framework applications as Microsoft 365 apps. So normally, this kind of resources is always my last slide, but today is a bit different. I want to try something new. So I have a small cliffhanger for you because as I have shown you, there are many more options on Microsoft 365 across apps. So I want to point out for you the next Thursday in the general dev application call, I will show you the exact same app realized as a Yo team solution. Looks slightly different because here I'm using the out of the box available from your teams, at least Fluent UI React North Star controls. 
but it looks quite the same, but would be a bit boring to only show you exactly the same. So I will additionally show you some additional capabilities. So I also realized a search-based messaging extension there who will review and publish those created documents. So I have some metadata manipulation based on adaptive cards. And then last but not least, of course, I will compare both approaches. What are the pros and cons of working with SharePoint Framework versus Teams native applications like your Teams or Teams Toolkit? I hope you will join me once again. And yeah, normally I'm a bit of kind of an understatement, but maybe it's pointed out with a yeah blinking eye. Um, it's not really the best double release since you use your illusion one and two, but I hope it's a good one. Thank you for the listening. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you. And great demo like always. Uh